I just got a new toy in. Welcome to Specific Love. For a while now, I've wanted to get a CNC machine, but just like many of you, well, it's kind of hard to justify the price. And then a company reached out to me and we struck up a deal. But before I can even take it out of the crate and use it, I have to create a mobile station for it. So let's do that. I drew up a small sketch here to give you an idea of what it's gonna look like. We're just gonna use some basic two by fours for the legs and for the frame, some half inch plywood for the top and for the bottom shelf, a little storage compartment. We can have some storage organizers, a little room over here for a vacuum and a little extra space behind it for whatever I need to store. And of course, don't forget the four inch caster so I can move this around easily. Now the height of this workstation is gonna be about the same height as my table saw, which sits about 34 inches. It might be 34, 35 inches, somewhere in there, but I wanna be able to see over the top of it, so that way if there's any kind of problems, I can stop it in its progress. Now first up, we're gonna cut the legs. We need these at 28 and a half inches, and I'm gonna need eight of these, because we're gonna have two of them fitting together in each corner. So, let's cut some two by fours. Now that I have all the wood cut, I'm gonna be combining two at a time in each corner to look something similar to that. That way I have a lot of strength on each end. And to do that, I'm gonna be using a combination of pocket screws and glue. So let's go do that. Now that we have the legs assembled, I'm gonna be cutting out the base. And I'm gonna continue to use just two by fours to keep this simple. For this, I'm gonna need to cut out two at 38, two at 45, and one at 25 inches. So, let's get cutting. Now, in many cases, when you're assembling the frame, you're gonna do it on edge, like so, to give it additional strength. I don't plan on putting a ton of weight on this, so I'm actually gonna do it on the side like this for a couple reasons. One, that'll allow for a little bit more added clearance for your shelving room underneath. Also, it'll provide a nice, strong, wide base for the casters that I'm gonna be putting on it. Also, when I assemble the centerpiece, I'm not gonna do it at the corner here. I'm actually gonna do it inset just a little bit, and that'll allow you to have some additional walk-up room and get close to it without having to hit your ankles or feet on the frame on the base. Now to assemble these together, I'm gonna to be using glue and pocket screws, of course, but you don't have to do that. You could always cut some rabbits and some dados out and glue and screw everything together. That's totally up to you. Now, of course, be careful which pieces you're putting your pocket holes in. In fact, I put the pocket holes in the wrong board. In fact, I should be putting it in the longest board here, and that way these will sit offset like so. And as you can tell, I screwed it in this. Fortunately, if you do this, you can easily put pocket hole plugs back in. You can even make your own plugs and glue them in place, and it's no big problem. Just be careful when you're doing your pocket screws. Now the board's inset about three inches, just to give that clearance, as I mentioned before, and I have clamped them together just to help any kind of movement as I screw them together. And there we have it. There is the base of the unit. Now we're gonna start with creating the top frame, the piece that actually goes around up here to support the CNC. And then we'll attach everything together. And for the top, I'm gonna need two boards at 49 inches and three at 32 inches. Now when I assemble the top, I'm gonna to keep everything vertical. That'll allow me to do some simple butt joints on the end. Also, when I go to attach the legs here on the sides, it'll allow me to easily screw in some screws from the side, keeping everything nice and strong. And now once we have the top of the frame assembled, we want to flip it over and have the top of it resting on a workbench. That way when we attach the legs, we can have the legs also sitting on the top of the workbench here, and we know that everything is nice and flush across the very top of the frame setup. Now when we're doing this, we wanna make sure that the long side here covers up the joint that we just made. Let's make everything look a little bit more flush and clean. Now, once we have all that assembled and nice and ready, Screw it in from the sides and everything should be nice and secure. Now we've moved the frame to the floor so that we now can attach the bottom to it. If I did this correctly, everything should line up to the corners of this frame. Awesome. Now we can just add some screws in all the corners and that way it'll be nice and strong. 
Now that we have the bottom attached, it's time to add the casters. I choose ones that are about four inches tall, and that should give you plenty of clearance, especially if I'm trying to get really close, I want to slide my foot up under, and that'll allow me not to hit or kick anything. Also, these are rated about 200 pounds a piece, which total with four of them will be about 800 pounds, which is plenty strong for what I'm gonna be using it for. Also, these are the lockable kind. I strongly recommend if you're going to use casters to get the lockable kind so it doesn't just roll around on you if you accidentally bump it. Also, remember to attach them as far out in the corner as you can for the best abilities you can possibly get. Now the screws I'm going to be using for this are actually going to be pocket screws and the reason why is it has a nice shoulder on it which should provide plenty of strength and pull down hard on that plate. Now, it's time to flip it over on its wheels. You ever had one of those moments when you are building your project and you kind of forgot to check the dimensions to see if you could get it out your door? Well, I did this once before when I was building a dog house and uh, well, that was quite a fiasco trying to get it out the door. I'll put a link to that video in the description if you want to see me struggle to get that dog house out the door. And I think I just about did it again on this project. Uh, to get it through the door, to get it into my garage where it's gonna sit, uh, it is at extremely close tolerances to get this out. I think I might be able to wiggle around on its side and maneuver it around the casters and get it out, but, um, yeah, so let's see if I can do this. Ah, did it! Wow. Now for the top of this unit, I'm gonna be using some three quarter inch pine plywood that I had left over from a previous project. Now for the shelf below, I'm actually gonna be using some, this is five millimeter or close to a quarter inch thick underlayment. Normally it's not very strong, but I'm gonna actually double this up and it should be plenty strong for the shelf below. Also, always keep an eye out for damaged wood. Over on that end, this is damaged. So I actually got this at a 70% discount. So always keep that in mind when you're at your store. And to try to minimize tear out on this plywood, I'm gonna make two cuts. The first one's gonna be kind of shallow, and the second one at the full depth. And that's a great way to cut across the grain with almost zero tear out. Now with the cart nearly complete, I want to create a storage compartment that'll fit under it in the bottom shelf. Now I like using these storage cases that have all the individual trays in them so you can easily take them out when you need them. So I want to build a little filing shelf sort of that these can slide in and out of and that'll fit right there on the bottom shelf. Now to make this little holder, we're going to continue to use the three quarter inch plywood that I had left over that I cut off the top of the cart that I just made. So we're going to first, we're going to rip this down and keep it straight, rip it down to 13 and a half inches, and then cut it at 23. Now that I have the sides cut out, I need to cut a dado on the inside of each of these in a certain location so I can insert some shelves. To do that, I need to cut a 3 8 inch cut that goes all the full length. So I've marked here in the location that I need along the sides, and I can use that as a guide as I cut them. And there we go. Now each of these slots is a half inch in size, so that we can take some plywood and stick it in there, and it should be relatively snug. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can even slide around just a little bit, as long as there's not a lot of slop in there. You can use brand new plywood, you can even use old plywood. In fact, I'm gonna try and use a bunch of my old scrap so I can, you know, we'll use it up, and not many people are even gonna take notice of exactly which wood is gonna be in here, so use whatever you'd like.
Now when you're gathering your wood for your shelves, don't forget your shelves chains are they're never gonna be seen. So you don't have to use perfect wood. For example, this is a couple pieces of real thin plywood that I've glued together. Nobody will ever notice. This right here is actually three separate pieces of it was long plywood I had, but they weren't well the full depth that I needed. So I glued them edge to edge. Normally this would not be a good suggestion, but considering this will be the sides here and the wood will be running to full width, they're just joined and held together in the middle. This will be perfectly fine as well. Also, don't forget old wood and old projects that you possibly are gonna be throwing away or disassembling. This was some old wood that was gonna get tossed away. And if you notice, one side's kinda of ugly, the other side's already nice and stained. So I'm actually making this the bottom, and this will be the top of the bottom, so it'll look like it's nice and clean. So, just utilize the wood you have, especially when lumber prices are kinda of high. Now when we go to assemble this, we're just using some simple butt joints, nothing fancy, it's a shop project. So I suggest taking the sides, and then your top shelf, Go ahead and slide it into place, and then take your bottom shelf and do the same. Again, we're not looking for anything to be nice and perfect, we're just trying to get it in there so that it stays together a little bit. Then just take a clamp, and want to add a clamp at the top. We're not making this tight, we're all we're doing is trying to keep it secure so it doesn't fall apart. And one at the bottom as well. Now that this is pretty sturdy, we can focus on the bottom in which we're just gonna glue and add some brad nails to hold everything in place. And then of course, just repeat the process for the top. And then we're gonna add a backing to it just to keep everything from sliding off the back. And again, glue and nails. And at this point, it's time to add the shelves. Now you could always add some glue in each of these runners that probably strengthen up the whole unit, but you don't necessarily have to. In fact, I'm not going to do it in this case. It should be tight enough. Now I've added a couple of the cases in each slot so that you get an idea of how easy and hard it is to get them out. For the larger ones, there's plenty of room for your hands to fit in. But the smaller ones, well, it's really tight tolerances. So we need to cut out a little bit of a section here so you can have a little more room to get your hand in and out. There we go, much better. Now I've installed the storage unit down here in the bottom of the cart, making sure it's over towards one corner. But I left a little room over here in the side for a couple of reasons. One, in case I ever in the future need to run any wires or cords or cables or anything, I have plenty of room to get around here. And two, in case I ever need to get in here and move these shelves out, I have the ability to do that as well. Now, to secure it in place, I just added two simple screws right here in the front. I'm not too worried about it getting moved around, but in case I ever bump it kind of hard, it will definitely stay in place now. And on this side, I made sure to leave plenty of room for about any size compact vacuum, which is something you essentially need if you're gonna have a CNC machine. Looking this over, it is a very large cart. And yes, that would be a major impact on some small garages. Now keep in mind, because it is such a large piece on top, it means you're gonna have plenty of extra storage below. So if by chance you have anything in your garage that would normally sit on the floor, or anything that might just be in the way, you can now store it below on the bottom shelf. And that should at least be able to minimize some of the impact it might have. And there you have it, a great way to make a heavy duty cart for a CNC or whatever you'd like to use it for. Now I'm still in the process of learning this machine, learning the software, and being able to program it to do what I would like it to do. But hopefully this year I will have a few videos coming out of some cool projects made with the CNC machine, so that might give you some ideas if you think about getting one in the future. Now I understand everybody does not have a CNC machine and that's cool. A lot of people can't afford one and I completely understand what you're talking about and what you feel. So with that said, this is not going to take over my channel. I just wanted to show a few projects and a few things I can make with it and I think would be very cool. With that said, I hope you get a chance to get out in your shop and have fun building. While I've wanted to. Yeah. In my. In this, blah, 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 blah. Let's try it again. Combining two of a time. Of a time. So we can stop it and process. I cannot talk right now. Side, 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 side. Let's try it again. I can get a CNC now. CNC machine. Blah, 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 blah. I cannot talk. <laughs>